It's really, really, really slowly. And, of course, it's, it's a completely futile strategy in the new environment. Now, let's look at human beings following the same kind of logic. We have our own strategies. And our strategies, as I mentioned earlier, are that we, are, we tend to use the resources we find around ourselves. We tend to be very competitive. We tend to be very aggressive. That has created an enormously powerful culture that we all belong in and we all partake in. And we are all descendants of those who have put those strategies into the most effective use, that we take the stuff we need from the environment and we... I mean, it's very... You see, we are toolmakers. We are toolmakers. And... Um, As toolmakers, we have almost um, sort of buffered ourselves from the normal effect, from the normal abrasion of evolutionary forces. Let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Um, Normally, what happens with speciation, when what drives a new species to develop, is when um, a particular family of animals may get split up because of population pressure or geological upheaval or whatever, and some small population finds itself off in a new environment. Let's suppose we're talking about an environment where perhaps it's a lot colder. And you'll find, after a surprisingly small number of generations, you revisit that population and you'll find that those animals which have genes which favor a thicker coat will have differentially prospered and the whole population will have a much thicker coat. Now, human beings, we are able to uh, move into any environment we like. We can live in the tundra, we can live in the Gobi Desert, we can even manage to sort of live in New York, for heaven's sake. Um, Because when we arrive, or when early man arrived in a... um, um, in, say, a very cold environment, instead of having to sort of wait for generations while thicker coat genes predominated, we see an animal that's already got a thicker coat, we say, we'll have it off him. So we have, we have always learned to take from our environment, to, to manipulate it to our own purposes, to be competitive and to be aggressive, and that has been a fantastically successful strategy up till now. Because up till now, we have been living in what seem to be limitless resources. Suddenly, that ain't so anymore. Suddenly, the effect of what we do in the world is beginning to be very, very noticeable. And we are clearly beginning to degrade the environment in which we live. Now, look at the kakapo, which has its own strategies, which were appropriate for an earlier environment. And it cannot think of anything else to do because it isn't a great thinker. And for it to change its reproduction strategy is something it can't do. It will be against kakapo nature. It will be an in kakapo thing to do. For human beings, we are reacting the same way, despite the fact that we do have this additional faculty that the kakapos don't have, which is we have the ability, as scientists, as people who are self-aware, as animals that have learnt to examine their own behaviour and to think about it um, in more objective terms, we can see that our instinct drives to do one thing, but our intelligence reveals to us the problems that will occur if we continue to follow those instincts unabated. And the question is, can we actually learn to listen to our intelligence rather than our instincts? Now, we've had a long time of... Science revealing to us one point after another that our instincts are wrong. I mean, our instincts tell us the world is flat. Our instincts tell us the world is at the center of the universe and the, uh, the sun is a little sort of ball of light that goes around it. Our instincts tell us all kinds of stuff that is just plainly wrong. And it's only our intelligence and our ability to educate ourselves that can counteract the instincts that we developed through generation, many, 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 many generations of living in a different environment than the one we now find ourselves in. 
So the only hope for our continued prosperity is to learn to apply the results of our intelligence through education and through scientific education to our current thinking and learn to use our current thinking, to, to, to learn to use our ability to think objectively to overcome the biases of our instincts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Douglas Adams. As usual, we uh, have a period of question time, which today is uh, begun by Jim Middleton. Yes, Jim Middleton from ABC Television. Um, our Prime Minister could have done with you when uh, he was trying to draft a preamble because he didn't understand the... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't understand the legal meaning of time immemorial either. But um, since time immemorial, human beings have um, been finding new and interesting ways of trying to wipe out other species from the planet... Uh, you talked of the, um, of the balance between intelligence and instinct. At this point, just how optimistic are you that uh, perhaps the balance may, sh may be shifting away from uh, the force of instinct to the virtues of intelligence? Well, I think it's... A, a, to be honest, I think it's a generational thing as much as anything else. I mean, I'm always encouraged when I discover from you know, friends of mine who've got uh, children... Sort of, I mean, I, I have a five-year-old, so he hasn't begun to sort of think about this yet. But, uh, uh, I, I mean, I know, you know friends of mine who have children you know, in their teens or whatever say they take absolutely as assumptions things that we've had to learn that have kind of gone against the grain for us, you know, because we grew up thinking you know, the world is our oyster. Um, and you know, to do with as we wish, and we've gradually had to learn that you know, things things are not that simple. And what I what, I, what I, I hear from a lot of places is that the next generation takes these things for granted that we have to be to, to we have to look after the world better. I hope that's true. I mean, I think there's a there's a very important point though I'd like to make, which is even though I've been uh, in, in this speech pointing out what the problems are, I think it's terribly important to be optimistic. Optimism is, is the only sort of tool we have. Um, uh, a friend of mine, the great computer scientist, Alan Kay, said the best way of predicting the future is to invent it. Um, and um, th I once heard um, a, a child psychologist um, on the television say a very interesting thing about bedwetting. He said that everybody takes the wrong strategy. If you're a parent, uh, in, in, if, you, if, you have a, if you have a problem, if a child has a problem with bedwetting, most people adopt exactly the wrong strategy, which is to say, "Listen, darling, don't don't wet your bed because if you wet your bed, you know it's going to be all sort of hot and steamy, or then get cold and damp and smelly and discoloured and all that kind of stuff." And that's the image you put in the child's mind that the bed is 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 wet and steamy and and, and dank and, and and smelly, whereas if in, uh, and and because that's the image that's in the child's mind, that's what you go towards. I mean, you, you create that which you imagine. Um, and uh, if, on the other hand, you say, just imagine how the bed will be if you don't wet it, which is it'll be all sort of beautiful and clean and white and nice and sort of smell nice. And you put that image in the child's mind, that's the way of curing it. So I think that um, you know, if we, uh, at the same time that you know, people who have ecological concerns, such as myself, um, do sort of go around saying, you know, we're doing terrible things and we have to be careful of what the results are. I think one of the most important things is actually to realise how, how wonderful this environment we have actually is and to engage with it as much as possible and to see it as much as possible and to enjoy it as much as possible. Then it becomes damn obvious that we have to look after it. You know, so so uh, I think that having, a, having the most positive view of the future is, 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 is the best way forward. Uh